Hello. Can't speak right now. We're somewhere very special right mm. now. Extremely special. Very, very special. Should, should, we, should we spin? Sure. She could get menacing, frightening, find help. Sometimes I scare myself, myself. She could get menacing, frightening, find help. Sometimes I scare myself, myself. She could get menacing, frightening, find help. Sometimes I scare myself, myself. She could get menacing, frightening, find help. Sometimes I scare myself, myself. She could get this. Is what's known as Bingo Sports. Bingo Sports in Tokyo. Which is a private collection of some ridiculous cars. Like, I don't even know anyone owning one, let alone... All, all of them. these, like, the amount of money that it would be to purchase mm. these cars, and the taste of the owner, like, one-offs, ridiculous cars that you just wouldn't even think you'd ever see. And seeing them in person now, you can truly appreciate engineering behind each of the cars. And yeah, 100%. What's actually, like, you can see them in pictures all you want, but until you actually you see, the see them in the details. flesh, you see the finer details which you don't see in pictures, it's ridiculous. If you're in Tokyo, I highly guarantee, I, I highly, not recommend. guarantee, I highly, <laughs> highly recommend, I guarantee Checking that you should out. come here. Yeah. I recommend you should check it out because it's, it's just ridiculous. Let's show them the details. We'll show them the details. So this car here, Driller. Mm -hmm. Is an F40 LM. F40 LM. So the F40 is already bonkers enough. They took it and made it into a Le Mans car. So this is full race car spec. Um, how much did the last one go at auction? 2015, the last one went for 3.3 million. So now so, I'm guessing somewhere around the six, six or seven, although who are we to really say? That's just a guess. But um, we've been here for about an hour and a half hour probably and a half, yeah. shooting these cars, shooting all of them, all the B-roll that you'll see we've just shot. Um, but in shooting the B-roll, we noticed a few awesome details about each of the cars. This car, for example, you know this vent that you see at the front? That little vent down there? You don't really see, you don't really know what that's for from looking at pictures. But then when you look at the car, you notice that vent goes into this here. This little strut, I don't know, support. support. I, I used to think that this was for support for the bonnet, but it's actually a pipe for that vent, comes through and goes into the cabin here for your AC, for your race car driver. So that's a pretty cool little feature that we found out. Another thing that we've seen, both the um, F40 and this beautiful 288 GTO Evolutione, is that this pinstripe that goes down the side is actually cut out of the cars. It's recessed, which is pretty amazing. Looks, looks crazy. In, in photos, you'd say that you just think that it's uh, painted on. One more feature that we noticed from cooling, it's on both, both of these cars, um, cooling for the driver, is that these mirrors, aero mirrors, they've got the gap in the middle, which a lot of aero, aero mirrors do, but in that gap, there's actually a vent with a scoop. So this here acts as an air duct, air goes in, travels in to, to the driver and cools them down. They also have a little twist knob in there. Yeah, there's a little twist knob in there it, to open so. and close it. What else have we noticed, Trilla? Just how many scoops there are. It's Scoop City. Ah, greetings. Yes, it is I, the Count. And I'm about to find out what the number of the day is. Oh, I wonder what it will be. <clears throat> Just looking back from door back, there's one. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Ah, yes, five is the number. Ah, ah, ah. We don't know what all of them are. We know that this one goes to an airbox. It goes through there, travels through here, and goes to that airbox. Goes into the engine. This one here goes to a radiator, which is at the back there. You can see. This one we're pretty sure is cooling for the engine because it actually curves in, goes towards where the engine is. Below brake ducts. Below, there's two. We're, we're thinking that one's brake ducts. 
this one who knows who knows if you know let us know in the comments being a race car of course there's uh the race car yeah. filling up whatever they're called filling up Rich areas car. rims yeah. we get to the back of the car and how exposed is it how exposed is it air just travels straight through goes in all those ducts and just straight out obviously helps with heat heating and cooling and all that stuff. So heat transfer, getting rid of yeah, the heat. Obviously your exhaust tips, you can see that they're right there through the mesh. Yep. Um, heat rises, air comes along. Yep. Scoops are right off. One thing I noticed as well is that the detail in these scoops here at the back, they actually angle down. So the air would travel through the car, come in those vents, and it'd come back out going in an upward fashion. That's down for it. You know, you might say other cars with cooling and, and they just have it cut out, but this actually angles it down, not just a standard cutout, which is pretty cool. One thing that we noticed that was a little bit weird is this F40 logo. Everyone knows F40s have the F40 logo there. However, it's only on the right-hand side of the car. You come over to the left-hand side and it's, it's, it's not there. I don't know if that's a thing with all F40s or... I, I don't know. I honestly thought, obviously just from seeing any photos, that I thought it was on both sides, but... There you but go. anyway, there you go. You notice that when, when you're up close. Obviously, not the standard F40 wing. They've got um, an adjustable wing here. Pretty cool little details, all carbon. But yeah, you definitely don't want it to rain with this car out on the street because, like because we said, look at that. good exposed it is. Everything's just... It's pretty much open. a shell of a car with a little bit of carbon fiber around it. Like, the amount of holes in this thing is ridiculous. Like, it's Swiss cheese, mate. Um, interior driller, did you notice this? Their dash, oh, is, that, is that a bit of flocking on there? I think they copied us. I think, that, I think they, they saw the Elmo build and yeah. they were like, mate, these guys are on something. How to flock your dash video. And, that, and they flock, yeah, how to flock your dash, we'll, we'll link it below. That's, that's how you do that's, it. That's what they've done. They've, they've just gotten their Pringles can and they've... <laughs> Wicked car. Absolutely amazing car. Now we move from the wonderful F40 LM onto this car, the race car that never was. 288 GTO Evolutione. So this is the, the big brother of that. And we've noticed also from um, looking at it and just like all those little features, like like the wing mirrors of the vents and that kind of thing. It's very similar. There's, there's a lot of similar traits. It's like, that's just a more refined version of this. Mm -hmm. um, this car though, what was it, de what was it designed for? Uh, this was for Group B racing. <laughs> this was so designed for Group the, B, back yeah. Back in the day, Group B, uh, Ferrari had to produce something. Obviously, how many specials was it? 20? Don't exactly know how anyway, many special specials they are. They produce cars to, in order to race in Group B. Yep. Um, they actually started production of this, got through five production models, and then Group B got scrapped. Um, they were actually aiming to do 20, but they had to can it because Group B got scrapped. So, so what these we're left are the with? Models, that's yeah, it. the remaining models that never race. got to race, yeah. but they're race bred um, lightning quick cars that are meant for the rally stage, which is pretty amazing. Meant for the rally stage, but yeah, ended up forming the uh, F40. Ended up going on to develop one of the coolest LM cars ever. Um, so from this to that, what you notice is that this car's a lot more round. Um, like if you if you notice the fenders, they kind of round over. This is a lot more jagged. Um, but the general shape is pretty similar, don't you think? Very similar. The wedge shape. Yeah. Pretty cool car. How we were speaking about this is a less refined version of that. They, they obviously spent more time, took that, turned it into that. You can tell from the back, the ventilation. Yes, this does have a hell of a lot of ventilation there. However, the F40 does have this mesh at the back, whereas the 288 is just a solid panel there, which I would imagine catches a fair bit of air. And by having it open like that, allows for a fair bit of cooling and less drag. Again, on the 288, we can see some adjustable um, aerodynamics there and there pretty cool after seeing the uh, F40 and the duct at the front you now notice that these ones do the exact same thing they go in into the middle and then Feet to the cabin. out through those vents oh look at that flocks dash as well they, they really must have what they must have really liked our episode that that you um you had your 
you you could you do you you want you you could do so you you. Villa, we have got a real life F1 car. Yeah, this is the one from 1987. Uh, it's a two time GP winner, so in the Australian GP and the Japanese GP. It looks a bit weird with these uh, wheels and tires, doesn't yeah, it's it? It's got real skinny tires on it. So these, these are obviously not what came with it? No, probably no. just for transportation reasons and storage. It looks rather odd. Wide they are. Um, yeah, those were back things. in the days when they were like ginormous rear tires. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's kind of big. One cool thing that yep. I noticed was this was, like you said, from the era of the whole cigarette um, debacles. Stuff. So we've got a Marlboro logo that's actually covered. You can still see it, but. Yeah, because there, there was that point in time when um, people started getting more conscious and all that kind of yeah. thing, and branding actually, in certain races, had to be covered up. And that's you can obviously see that, that's what that is. Maybe it's from the Aussie GP. What else do you like about this driller? The brake ducts. The brake ducts are pretty sick, so eh? Sick. It looks like. Um, the vent out of an NSX, what is it? An NSX, NSX Type R, R yeah, that has the top. vent on the top. Looks like that kind of thing there. There's that one and there's um, one at the front. Brake cooling, very important. Another thing that I thought was pretty cool is this little Velcro patch headrest. Little bit of Ferrari branding on there. And also this steering wheel. Sick. With a digital display. I don't, know if, I don't know if digital display is from back in the day or... None of this modern day uh, million button steering wheel. No, just, just, just two buttons. Yeah. They just, they just got the NOS button and um, the other NOS button. I need NOS. I need NOS. 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 I need 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 NOS. What are you talking about, Brian? I need NOS. After the F1 car, we come on to something pretty special. Pretty damn special, really. I don't know if you could say even more special. I'm special! Just uh, based on how many were produced. So how, how many were produced of this? Just one. Just one? This is the only one, so... And what is it? There's a, it's a Lamborghini Miura SVR. So you probably know there's a Miura, there's a Miura SV, a Miura SVJ, which is like the race spec, and then there's an SVR, which is a one of one. <laughs> Uh, this was Very cool. actually sold to someone in Japan in 1978. Yeah. Um, and from there, it actually formed uh, one of the hero cars in a manga comic. That's awesome. So this is actually part of like Japanese car culture. It's in mangas, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. That's it's pretty pretty cool fact to know. A lot of special features as well, just like the F40. You see all these scoops, wider fenders. And I noticed. Um, I noticed that obviously the rear arches are a bit bigger than the standard mm -hmm. uh, mirror. I'm not sure if this is different down there, but I like it. Um, the wing on the top is the coolest. <laughs> the wing's cool. Downforce here. That's similar to that uh, to that BRZ that we saw at the, at the drifting. You know, oh, yeah. had a had a Re -re wing mounted right about here in the wing windshield. Um, one thing I did notice when looking at it is that this is obviously standard for all mirrors, mm -hmm. but I had never seen them in the flesh. Is that the the engine's mounted this way? It's not mounted going the standard. Yeah, so I don't know if you can get a shot from the inside. Backwise. And see the trumpets. Yeah. So these had trumpets from factory. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can see that it's mounted. What is it, long, longitudinal? Longitudinal? I don't even know the proper word, but it's, it's not mounted the yet. standard supercar way. Yeah. Obviously, being like one of the first, if not the first, um, supercar, mid-engined supercar. Mm -hmm. They didn't really. It was, like a, like it, a was, it was a test, yeah, test run. Yeah, you know, you, you put it that way, it might be good. Put it that way, oh, it's even better. Look, they're better over there. But anyway. So John. Yes. Right next to this right next to beautiful SVR, what do we have? We have. Come over here. We have a Porsche. Car. What, Por what Porsche is this? I'm pretty sure that it competed in the bond. How do we know that? Although the lady didn't really know all that much about that. How do we know that though? But we know that just simply because of the sticker. Look, I might be completely wrong, but 
That's what we're guessing. It's obviously um, a lot wider than a normal Porsche. It's got center lock, so it actually is a race car. Unless if there's just some person who's an absolute nut dropping aside the center lock on their road car. But from all these things, we can decipher that it actually is a race car. With a high probability, high probability that it did compare to the one. I just don't think the camera does the car any justice in terms of how no, wide it actually wide. is. Like, Look, that, that's how wide I am. It's, it's like one giant wide. Like extra. Extra. What size size do we have? Something stupid. Three, four, fives. Three, four, fives on the rear. Try fitting that in your city. So once again, some awesome cooling. If you look at the uh, tail at the back. If you look through here, the whale tail. Um, you can see intercooler there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's intercooler in there. And now the best part of the whole lot, like we've checked out the inlays, guys. Now the best part, the trusty back. Uh huh. It's well, funny going from all these race spec cars. Look, who and knows? Then who knows? Having the this in the it might be like a. One of the first ones ever made. It could be something cool. We, we don't know. I like the patina on it though. Like it's not, mm. it's not kind of Concours spec. Perfectly. It's not perfect. You look inside, it's kind of still worn, which is what I really like to see. Yeah. Like very look cool. at that. Still a very, very. It's been cool. driven. It's been enjoyed rather than just sitting to collect dust. Well, it has collected a little bit of dust, but we won't show them that. <laughs> that is Bigo Sports. Um, we've spoken to the lady that works here and she's told us that there's another few cars around we'll see if we can go sit go have a look at those but who knows let's, let's check it out Shit again. Shit again.